Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Thank you um, very much for this great opportunity. It's my first time here. Greatly delighted, and um, I want to really, really thank um, Pastor Pojo and his dear wife. Let's give them a big God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. And the resident pastor, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I believe that the Lord has a word for us tonight. Let me encourage us to open up our hearts as we receive. Can you lift your hands to heaven and ask the Lord to give you an encounter tonight? go ahead the bible says he sent forth his word and his word he let them and delivered them from their destructions take a moment to cry out your heart in expectation father give me an encounter tonight and that by your spirit let your word come to change me let it come to lift me let it come to empower me i will never be the same let it be a new season for me in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to visit us by your word. We pray that you strengthen us, grant us wisdom, empower us as we hear. Let it be the hearing of faith that produces the working of miracles. I pray that by this word you will move us forward. I pray that by this word you will restore. I pray that by this word you will heal. By this word you will deliver. By this word you will empower. In the name of Jesus. To you be all the glory for in Jesus name we pray. God bless you. One more hand clap and please be seated. Please be seated. I have a very important word. I consider my church tonight a prophetic church. Um, the Lord placed it on my heart for those of us who were not able to uh, connect to the morning session please do so it was I believe a meeting dedicated for ministers and leaders but I think that the principles apply to everyone and um, let me please encourage you to do the best that you can and um, have access to the teaching and listen the Bible says faith comes and it comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God hallelujah and um, Tonight, I want to show us by the Spirit of God as a prophetic church celebrating 30 years of God's faithfulness over this vision. Um, it's a very powerful secret. I have learned this secret, number one, from the study of Scripture. Number two, the privilege of watching the lives of those who have enjoyed longevity of impact, whether in ministry, whether in business, whether in career and then by the message of God these are principles that I have applied to my own life and I pray in Jesus name that your eyes will be open amen, amen and amen. amen tonight I'm teaching on what I title strategy for consistency strategy for consistency this I believe is a gift from God to someone giving you the keys that make for longevity proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 let's start from there proverbs 4 and verse 18 strategy for consistency the bible says but the path of the just would you read with me want to go but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day straight up you see that according to god's ordination for all men we should never have a better yesterday more and more is the heritage of all saints are we together it is not consistent with god's desire for the saints to have someone celebrate your yesterday with no hope of having a better today or tomorrow according to god's plan the doings of god in your life today and tomorrow should by far surpass whatever it is that happened yesterday no matter how great no matter how spectacular so the bible says the path of the just 
not the path of everyone the path of the just one who is in christ the bible says it should be in this manner as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day let me speak over your life already in the name of jesus i just described your destiny from now henceforth i just described your path from now henceforth in the mighty name of jesus no going up and going down again i speak consistency over someone i don't know who is receiving this prophetic word but in the name of jesus christ whatever makes your life and your progress epileptic that you are up today down tomorrow with a job today you lose it tomorrow with opportunities today you lose it tomorrow in the name that is above all names let that epileptic experience come to an end now please be seated god bless you joshua chapter 13 and verse 1 this is a message for those who have done well this is not a message for someone who is starting joshua 13 and verse 1 now joshua was old and stricken in years please listen and the lord said unto him thou art old and stricken in years and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed you've done well you've sojourned you are old you have experience but the truth is based on my blueprint for you there is still much land to be possessed there is still much land to be possessed there is always more for the believer we do not plateau in this kingdom there is always more regardless the achievement regardless the accomplishment one of the most um, striking scripture for me in the bible is the fact that jesus is seated at the right hand of the father then the bible says making intercession what then was the value of it is finished and yet the bible says he's seated not standing not fighting victory established and yet even to him there is still more are we together so he says there is more land to conquer philippians chapter 3 this would really be our text for tonight from verse 12 to 15 may god open our eyes in jesus name paul is speaking very profound admission and this for me it represents the template of anyone who wants to last anybody who wants longevity of impact there is an understanding there is an orientation you must sustain without which you will fail you don't have to be fake to fail you don't have to be bad to fail once you lose sight of this kind of orientation especially in the face of achievements or results you will lose the ability to have longevity of impact let's consider the thoughts of paul philippians 3 and verse 12 not as though i had already attained i hope you realize we're speaking here we're talking of paul even as an unbeliever he was already an accomplished person so we're not talking of someone who was a failure then came into christ and started at ground zero he was still the finest of them even before he met christ and here's an honest admission paul is speaking not as though i had already attained he says either were already perfect entire complete mature he says but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which i am apprehended of christ jesus verse 13 he says brethren who is he speaking to brethren brethren i count not myself thank you for your commendations thank you for your likes and shares thank you for your wonderful reviews but this is my conclusion about myself i count not my as myself to have apprehended he said but this one thing i do there is always one thing champions do there is always this one thing this one thing i do he says forgetting those things which are behind is someone following and reaching forth unto the things which are before forgetting those things he didn't say forgetting evil things forgetting bad things forgetting negative things whatever they are provided they are behind i forget them and i reach forth to the things that are before me the first two words verse 14 shout it if you're a believer one to go one more time one more time 
One more time. He didn't say, I desire. I press. Determination and focus. The mindset of a winner. The mindset of a finisher. He says, regardless what has happened around my life, good or bad, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth, knowing that there are still things before me, he said, I press. As an act of faith, I press. As proof that I know there is still more, I press. You stop pressing when you get to the finish line. And Paul is saying, my press means I am aware that I've not gotten to the finish line. When you see athletes run, when they get to the finish line, no matter how fast they mark time, they lose speed until they finally come to a standstill. Am I right on that? So he says, I press. I press. Let's finish up that scripture. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Now, just a few thoughts that I want you to listen. Remember, this is a prophetic charge, a strategy for consistency. Number one, the first thing I want you to learn tonight is overdwelling on the past, both negatively and positively, can hinder advancement and progress. Overdwelling on the past, whether it's a positive past or negative past, both of them, they have the ability to impede your progress. They have the ability to hinder advancement and progress. Overdwelling on the past, overdwelling on the past, whether negatively or positively, it has the ability to hinder advancement and progress. And I'll tell you more particularly that when you overdwell on a negative past, this is what it does to you. It creates fear, it creates discouragement, and it deflates your passion to press. Let me take that again. When you dwell over, dwell on a negative past, be it your background, be it your failures, the Bible says that it sustains the ability, among other things, to create fear, to create discouragement, and to deflate your passion. There was such a man in the Bible called Gideon. The Bible tells us that this man had the destiny of a warrior. And because he was the least and his father's house was the least, he was used to failure. Are we together now? So when God would come to appear to him, the man was hiding. And God did not call him by that situation. He says, oh thou mighty man of valor. He did not say yes Lord or yes sir. He went straight to bring his excuses. If this is true, why have all these things fallen upon me? The same thing you see in John chapter 5, the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says there was a man who had been there 38 years. And when Jesus came to him and asked, would thou be made whole? He would have said yes or no. And he went straight. He said, look, you don't know my situation. I have no man. He didn't ask him, why are you in this condition? He said, do you desire and the impotent man said, my problem is that I have no man. Something happens to you when you overdwell in the past. It brings fear. It brings discouragement. There are people who are so used to pain when you pray, no matter how you shout, they answer only one amen at the end of that prayer. And it's honestly just for the ritual of it. They don't believe it. Pain can become a mindset. Pain can become a stronghold discouragement can become a stronghold master we have toiled all night i like peter watch a winner's attitude he says nevertheless 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 for someone this is a word for you nevertheless you've tried and tried on jobs nevertheless you've tried and tried to build nevertheless you've tried to put your life together and it seems like the more you try things have gone haywire nevertheless he says at thy word you are introducing something to my life now he said that was not there nevertheless so overdwelling on a negative past is able to bring fear discouragement and to deflate your passion to press now overdwelling on a positive past let me tell you what it does it creates complacency pride overconfidence and indiscipline Listen carefully and then you write. Overdwelling on a positive past 
creates number one complacency number two pride there is such a thing as the pride of life not pride there are two different things the pride of life is the self-glorification you met upon yourself are we together by reason of obvious achievements if you have not achieved anything you can have pride but not the pride of life only achievers can have the pride of life if you've not built anything you've not built anyone you don't have any track record that supports your excellence your value you can have pride but not the pride of life is someone learning now so over dwelling on a positive past this is a prophetic word for you as a people as a family under this grace it can create complacency pride overconfidence who still remembers samson i will arise as before only to find out that he's lost his source of strength over confidence and then in discipline these four things follow anyone who decides to overdwell on a positive past you can see straight up here that whether that past is positive or negative if you do not manage it well it sustains the ability to hurt your tomorrow who is learning are we together now so whether it's your crowns or your scars you are mandated to find a way by the spirit to forget about it if you want to move forward so paul says this one thing i do in covenant nation this is one thing you must do even after 30 years forgetting the things that are behind sick bodies that have been healed glory to god and that's enough destinies that have been transformed glory to god and that's enough maybe challenges that are not so good that you may have gone through father i thank you in the midst of it and that's enough you must learn to create boundary for celebration are we together now don't over celebrate success it can be dangerous generous enough and once it gets to that limit that's it when you cross that limit it doesn't bless you again I remember one time very interesting humorous story I was microwaving beef so um, I don't know what happened and I forgot the thing and just left the thing there and um, just to warm it a little I overdid the thing I came back and you know I added the timing again and when someone only God knows what I was doing I came back and uh, the same microwave that was supposed to just make this thing a very healthy meal it turned that thing the, the kitchen was I said look look what I've done with all this anointing look look what has happened <laughs> are we together now that's what happens when you over celebrate failure or over sympathize over celebrate success or over sympathize with failure there is a temperature enough to warm your food and that becomes fine when you overdo it it starts to hurt what was once a blessing who is learning now because some of you have refused to move forward courtesy your last victory courtesy your last result as soon as that result arrived you stop seeing you stop praying you stop hearing you stop pressing you don't wake up in the morning again you stop buying books your life is full of celebration until it has become an empty celebration because you see in destiny nobody claps for you twice for the same level once you receive the upload that comes with a level that's it you clap for a little baby when the baby starts walking you don't clap for an adult for walking you've been walking too long you fly then we clap am i right on that <laughs> well if you fall sick and you lose your ability to walk and you start back then we can encourage you on that but not a healthy adult and then you say you demand an applause for walking no you've been walking too long you've exhausted that that possibility are we learning now someone say in the name of jesus shout it say in the name of jesus I obtain grace to forget about yesterday and reach for tomorrow in the name of Jesus for someone you need to go and hide your awards for a moment they are distracting you they are distracting you you flaunted them before you to the point your vision is now blood suspend those awards for a while and have the mentality of a starter so that you can press I think I've seen this and, and, and it's a very honest admission I've seen this swallow people up in ministry. 
I've seen this swallow people up in business. I've seen this swallow people up in destiny. So someone who comes, say, from a background of deprivation, the first day he makes maybe $1,000, $10,000, he celebrates, he can't believe it's a dream come true, uh, and then he stops there. Only to realize that that was only good for his personal needs. That cannot go, it, you, when you really want to do serious things, that does not amount to anything again. Are we together now? And then there are people in ministry the day someone gets healed, the day someone gets blessed, the day God gives you an elevated platform to sell his grace, that becomes the end of your impact. I'm praying for someone. Whether it is your pain or your crowns, whether it's your scars or your crowns, whatever has blurred your vision and impeded your capacity to go forward, I release you from that shackle today. Shout a believing amen. I release you from that shackle in the name of jesus christ so the bible says this one thing i do a negative past creates fear discouragement deflates your passion to press a positive past creates complacency pride overconfidence and many times indiscipline now i'll give you two strategies and then we'll pray two strategies for consistency number one the first strategy that I'm going to give you is someone learning remain humble and broken remain humble and broken you think this is a very cheap statement until you see what has happened to people as a result of pride remain humble and broken regardless what god does through your life remain humble and remain broken the bible says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise a broken and a contrite heart you know what a broken heart means a broken heart doesn't mean heartbreak. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. A broken heart. Um, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. I need to explain what a broken heart is here. A broken heart means a heart that is malleable, childlike enough to acknowledge and recognize the hand of God as the principal factor behind your victory, behind anything good in your life. It's a secret I've seen in scripture. It's a secret I've seen in the life of the fathers and by the mercies of God it's a secret that I've adopted in my own life. That the higher he lifts you, the more you remain on your knees. It's the safest position for any believer. You hardly fall when you are kneeling. You fall when you stand. Are we together now? Yes. And Father, I realize that it is because of you that I am what I am. I realize that it is by your mercy for the Bible says a man can receive nothing except it is given unto him and unfortunately we live in a celebrity age we love the spotlight nothing wrong with that we love likes and shares nothing wrong with that we love to be an idol to somebody even though God warned us about idolatry are we together now we, we like these things and sometimes we crave for it to a point that um, we can get sick over the desire for the accolades of men. I show you an irrefutable secret. Remain humble and remain broken. The Bible says God resisted the proud. Let me explain that to you. It means the anointing cannot help you because the anointing was not designed to fight God. It only fights anything that is anti-Christ. So if it is God that is opposing you, the only prayer that bails you out is the prayer of mercy. Are we together now? And for your information, browse through scripture from Genesis to Revelation and learn how God fights. You've not seen a warrior like God. He says, let God arise and let his enemies I don't want to distract you by explaining to you what it means to be God's enemies because God's enemy is not the person you hate no God's enemy is anyone including you 
who becomes a perpetual interruption to kingdom come anybody Jonah was a prophet as soon as he became an interruption to God's program he became God's enemy immediately God's enemy is not an unbeliever <laughs> God's enemy is not somebody practicing witchcraft or wizardry the moment your life becomes a consistent interruption to God's program so next time you say let God arise verify first are we learning but I hope you're receiving something humble and broken now our world interprets humility as weakness because they say you are losing the opportunity to shine how do you watch opportunities just pass you like this and you don't rub it in I mean God has done something so great I'm not saying don't celebrate success but you have to be careful the same people who will tell you become king over us will say crucify him tomorrow they will look you to the face and act as if they didn't say it before you need to understand how frail men are they will say become king over us today and they will say crucify him tomorrow there is only one friend that sticks closer than a brother are we together now yes humility there's something that humility does it it adds honor to your achievements find show me someone who is doing so well and then maintains a disposition of humility that is someone who will look like Beulah and Hephzibah but show me someone is doing who is doing so well then he rubbishes that beauty with pride pride is a destroyer it's a depleter it reduces the value of anything anything I'm praying for someone obtain the grace to be humble Amen. this temptation to always want to shout things and drum it and prove a point is unnecessary the Bible teaches us a lesson from the life of Joseph Joseph was someone who was disbelieved by his brothers they invested in an attempt to make him a failure it didn't work he went to Potiphar's house just when you thought things were getting better are we together now Potiphar came with his own the wife came with her own landed him into prison can you imagine that and now in prison he began to help some people you can imagine the pain and the offense and then the guy whose dream he interpreted he begged the guy he said when you get to the king please tell the man I'm innocent when that guy got there he forgot and the forgetfulness of a man added two more years to the stay of Joseph we don't know how long he stayed but we know that whatever the time was it was plus two years are we together now Joseph in one day is lifted and he becomes prime minister be honest if you were Joseph mention two people that you will summon as your first assignment leave the issue of grains and seven years of this huh and who <laughs> you see why you need to repent are we together now that's the difference between you and Joseph not Joseph Joseph gets to the palace and was not even distracted by the gifts and all that he went straight to work and then the Bible tells us that when his brothers came and he saw them bow like he saw in the dream you thought that it would be an opportunity for him to met out judgment this is Joseph Pharaoh said I am Pharaoh he said only in the matter of administration will you be greater than me as far as operation is concerned Babylon I mean Egypt is yours he would have starved his brothers to death but not Joseph he said you meant it for evil but God turned it for good does that look like someone's testimony but let me tell you this and it is powerful counsel pride is a destroyer pride is a destroyer I fight pride I fight it with every sense of viciousness and you will not know how hard it is to stay humble if you have not done anything there's no temptation I mean you've not there's, there's absolutely nothing there it's like someone who doesn't have money saying I'm humble you're not exactly right <laughs> I don't mean to insult you I hope you are not 
but you, you don't you are not you are not humble with respect to what humility is with respect to what is tempting you that as a family you would be people that have a signature of great achievement garnished with humility that you can come to church and be such an unassuming person people will almost misunderstand you until your works begin to speak for you at the gates that someone will say do you realize that this man though an usher let me tell you a bit about his credentials and they begin to read something so inspiring and in the midst of it you still kneel down you can still roll you can still lift up your hands regardless the pedigree let me tell you the truth run away from people who make crime before God look like an embarrassment because you are lifted I tell myself may I never get to that point where, where when I when I come before the Lord I don't come as a man of God I'm not apostle to him no. he's the one who sent me I hope you are getting inspired I'm challenging you because some of you this is what God needs to you found out that your life refused to go forward I'm telling you this is a diagnosis when pride entered it's like you switched on you you're off your ignition and you stop moving and all the stories you have to tell are stories of yesteryears there's nothing God is doing now the reason is because you have refused to acknowledge him let me show you one scripture and we'll move to the second point and then I'm done Proverbs chapter 3 please from verse 5 never forget this scripture simple enough for you to remember here's what it says trust in the Lord covenant nation trust in the Lord with all thine heart then it says lean not unto thy own understanding verse 6 in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path please shout verse 7 if you are a believer ready one to go be not wise in thine own eyes fear the Lord I've seen people pray, pray right. I've seen people give right. I've seen people live right. I've seen people talk right. I've seen people serve their value with the highest level of excellence possible. And yet in a very shocking and sometimes inexplainable way, you cannot tell why they still don't get results. I know what the mercy of God is about. Are we together now? You know, when people clap about their crown, some of us who know where God brought us from, we are not ashamed to say, Lord, some may trust in horses, chariots, some may clap because of the leverage they've had, leverage of maybe parents, leverage of wealth, but some of us are literally a testament of your mercy and your grace. Perhaps this may not be a word for everyone, but I'm speaking to someone who you know that God, there was no other way, no other way. You came to Lagos for want of what, almost like a fugitive, not knowing your left from your right, but look what the mercy of God. I mean, looking from hindsight, you will know that that was not wisdom at all. It was just the grace of God carried by his mercy. Perhaps you came as a copper and you were completely confused and now one year down the line two years down the line five years down the line God has brought honor and glory to you someone in one minute can you lift your hands and say thank you Jesus not just for covenant nation for your life say thank you Jesus take a minute I don't know how you are going to say it, but say thank you Jesus thank you thank you it is by your grace and it is by your mercy that I am what I am today I am a CEO I still remember the times I used to beg you may say I thank you today I am an employer of labor as young or old as I am go ahead thank him thank him bring words mention them count your blessings it is all right to name them one by one for the minute or so that you have someone be generous be lavish thank you thank you thank you some of you came into this city confused disoriented and by the mercy of God he gravitated you to this assembly now you've been mentored you've been cultured you've been built look the version of you that has emerged and the version of you that is emerging someone lift your hands and thank God 
thank him for the anointing thank him for wisdom thank him for the hand of God that is evidently upon your life we are still saying thank you thank him for your wife thank him for your children thank him for your job thank him for his mercies if the Lord had not been on our side now may Israel say covenant nation are you grateful enough grateful enough to see his hand in the midst of storms grateful enough to see the finger of God the first strategy for consistency consistency is to remain humble remain broken acknowledging the hand of God without which you would not amount to anything take a minute you are not wasting your time this is why you came to church I see your faithfulness I see your faithfulness how can I forget forgive me I repent here in church for forgetting that it was your hand upon my life it was not just my uncle it was not just my auntie someone is praying that you have companies around Africa companies around the globe you have become a notable voice some of you have made giant intellectual strides all by the mercy of God this was not how you started compare your version today and your version the last one two three four five ten years go ahead take a minute thank you for your hand thank you for your hand in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let me tell you sincerely I'm giving you a piece of my secret place this is what I do no matter how great no matter what God does no matter how spectacular once i return back home back to my knees back to my altar i have returned to give god thanks and you sign it it is done what is the next project this is the attitude of winners some of you never return back to say thank you you get so distracted by the calls the new contacts the new opportunities now you are CEO now doors are opening now you are flying around the world can I tell you the truth the Bible says the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope there are men who have risen from grass to grace and there are others who have risen or come down from grace to grass may you not be one of them there was a man in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar on account of the abundance of pride within his heart he was reduced to an animal a beast remain humble as God lifts you remain humble don't mind foolish people don't allow them massage your ego to your destruction I'm not saying celebrate the hand of God celebrate the hand of God Philip Philemon 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith listen might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ it is not humility to refuse to acknowledge that this is the Lord's doing the Bible said it is the Lord's doing It's okay if it is marvelous in your sight and the sight of all who watch you but the key is to be humble the Bible says it this way let this mind be in you Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 which was also in Christ Jesus there was an orientation that he sustained that even though he was God are we together now and he did not consider it robbery if he said he was God he did not lie but the Bible says he stripped himself of all that glory and that splendor he humbled himself and carried the likeness of men and then he died even the death on the cross watch the blessings and the blessedness of humility the Bible says verse 9 wherefore on account of this template this orientation God had so highly exalted not God had exalted the last time that word was used it was highly favored 
now there is highly exalted to be favored alone is enough blessing to be highly favored is another dimension to be exalted in itself is an advantage to be highly exalted the bible says and he was given a name an office above every other office that at the name of jesus the bible says every knee should bow it's an instruction of things in heaven of things in earth and of things under the earth and then that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is the lord the word lord is the word adon absolute master owner the bible says the earth is the lord's and its fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell therein are we together now many of us do not know the heights that are still left in the spirit greater prophecy upon your head but it would take being humble and being broken has someone learned something let me give you the final key and then we'll see where to end for this session i hope this is a key that will open a door for someone perhaps you need to return back after church and just take a few minutes to cry out your heart in repentance to say i found myself committing the sin of pride show me mercy this is not condemnation is acknowledging that you have been the enemy of your own destiny number two the second key as a strategy for continuous progress a strategy for longevity of impact are you ready never stop learning never stop learning never stop learning commit to continuous learning commit to continuous learning John chapter 1 and verse 5 this is the ministry of light ladies and gentlemen please look at me the Bible says the light shineth in the darkness it says and the darkness comprehended it not provided there is light there will not be darkness let me put this in perspective for you so you understand the power of what I just said. When the Lord was creating or recreating the earth as we know in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that God called the light day and the darkness he called night. You know what that means? That day is not necessarily the chronological passage of time. So you can be 12 noon. If you don't have revelation, it's still night for you. Are we together? So we say good morning for morning, good afternoon for afternoon, good evening. In the realm of the spirit, good morning, good afternoon remains for only carriers of light. If you do not carry light, any time of the day is bad night. In fact, not even good night. Because many bad things happen in the night. The Bible says they that sleep, sleep at night. Are we together? Weeping endures for a night. There's a connection between night, darkness, and weeping. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, who is worthy, deserving to open the book and unlock the scroll. He says, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah as is deserving, qualified to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. You know what that means? If the book cannot be opened and you cannot access the riches that are contained therein, your weeping continues. He said, weep not. Somebody who is qualified to open the book has come. Many believers are ignorant or our knowledge is scattered, not methodical enough to produce profit. Please look at me. How many of you know that deal, D-E-W, how many of you know that that is water too? But it cannot fill your bucket and it cannot profit you. You can't bath with dew. You can't come out and just turn around and then say you've taken your bath. Although that is water, the same water you used to bath. The difference is that you have, do you know that the dew that fills this room, you can put everything together and it may not even fill a plate. 
and yet it makes a lot of noise it stops you from seeing and when, once <laughs> once you bring it down to a, a pure liquid point you see that it's not it's not amount to much that's how many of us carry truth little of many things but it's not to the degree that can produce profit how many of you know that if we shut down the lights in this beautiful auditorium and you put your phone light your phone light is light but not light enough to turn the darkness in this place to light first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 a charge to someone if you want to remain consistent and if any man think that he knoweth anything the bible says that he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know there is a standard of light connected to every result you desire let me say that again there is a standard of illumination that you must contend for you want the anointing there is a body of knowledge that supports that dimension of the anointing you desire you want prosperity you want increase influence your assignment is to search for light and never stop never stop never stop never stop never stop at the zenith of his apostolic ministry paul said that i may know him still pressing for knowledge still pressing for knowledge it's a secret that i've learned I learn from anything I learn from anyone and I try to structure my knowledge what do I need to know more about ministry what do I need to know more about finances what do I need to know more about leadership what do I need to know more about God don't say I know mm -mm. you see that what do I need to know what else do I need to know what else you must have the heart of a learner you learn passionately while you serve even with the crown on your head you keep learning you keep learning you keep learning you don't allow the crown to distort your passion to learn that you are broken you are humble and then you keep learning here's what the bible says that the labor of the fool the fool there is a description of a kind of person the labor of a fool wearied every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. There is a way to do ministry and win. There is a way to do business and win. There is a way losers do ministry. There is a way losers do business. There is a way losers try to look for money. Not an insult, but an honest truth. There is a way losers try to live their life. You must find out. Listen, let me tell you. God, through the power of structured mentorship, has distilled knowledge already you see the beauty of mentorship is that you have an opportunity to sit down under constructive knowledge knowledge that is distilled the sense has been taken away from nonsense and you serve it and you are ready is ready for consumption when you harvest something in a farm it may not be ready for consumption many times are we together but the difference between a farm and a restaurant in a restaurant you say food is ready what does that mean there's nothing to do just sit and eat hopefully pay or when somebody pays for it you sit down and eat i like the restaurant concept you pay first are we together but if and when you do you sit down happily nobody asks you how you look nobody asks you your complexion your age once you are able to pay you sit with honor and take your time and enjoy your meal light light high level spiritual illumination having their understanding darkened Ephesians 4 18 being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them as a man of God contend for knowledge learn from those who know learn from those who know learn from the ministry of the Holy Spirit learn from the Word of God follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise as a businessman there's no challenge you are finding today that is new to you if it's debt there are people who have owed billions of naira and dollars and they came out with the dignity of kingdom integrity don't let it swallow you in pride there is always a way out everybody's mountain is a representation of his ignorance and let me tell you the truth failure is not generic it depends on the absence of light that is there if there's no light everything can look like a mountain everything at all but once there's light light can deflate many challenges you see 
Apostle, my own problem is money. I issue of God, I'm fine with God, but this money it has refused to answer. I respect your pain, but it's not true. I don't believe you. If anything, quite honestly, you are in a place of opportunity, you are already at a vantage position by reason of being across this territory. But I don't have anybody. That's the point. Nobody has anybody. There are principles that bring people. Are we together now? The man said, I have no man. I don't want to talk about his story. The man at Bethesda. You mean he could not greet anybody for 38 years? He couldn't tell anybody, good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. And they say, I'm used to you. Let me help you. What did the other people do that they had men who helped them? The man said, I have no man. I have no man does not bring helpers. Commit to a life of humility and brokenness. Commit to continuous learning. Continuous learning. Don't leave what brought you where you are. If coming to church and hearing the word and growing is what brought you here, don't allow with all due respect, I'm a CEO, I'm too busy. Thank God for the power of technology. You can access material, you can have the service online. And for many people, you can even travel and be streaming while you are in the air. There's no excuse whatsoever. Let your lifting be an advantage, not a cost. Are we together now? Let what you have achieved not stop you from achieving what God desires for you. Let me stop here. We'll take a few minutes to pray. But I came with a burden in my heart celebrating 30 years and celebrating with this ministry. But the Lord put these words very strong in my heart. There is a strategy for consistency. Many of you have been too epileptic. Maybe your spiritual life, maybe your career, maybe your finances. And you are learning now that it is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. I don't know who God has spoken to today. It is not all up to God. It is not all up to you. Lend me two minutes of your time and we are going to pray. And I want you to pour out your heart praying these keys. The grace to be humble. The grace to be and to remain broken. And then you cry for passion. Passion for continuous learning. Some of you right from church here, you should head to a bookstore before you get home. Buy the truth. The truth is not a gift. You buy it. There are currencies you use to buy the truth. Hunger is a currency, a hard currency that buys the truth. Humility is currency. Are we together now? Go ahead and pray. Take a moment and pray. Covenant Nation, take a moment and pray. As you celebrate 30 years of God's faithfulness, do not waste this opportunity. Invest this one minute you have in prayer. I obtain grace to be humble. In spite of the workings of God in my life, I obtain grace to be broken, to remain broken, to remain malleable, to remain broken, not above guidance, not above counsel. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone is praying. A desperate person is praying. One who desires to go forward is praying. One who is ready for the next 30 years of achievements, if Christ tarries. Go ahead and pray. Pray for grace to remain a student, a student of learning, a student of knowledge that you never plateau as far as your desire to know is concerned. That the more you know, the more you keep learning, the more you keep learning. Keep learning the ways of the Spirit. Keep learning the way of prayer. Keep learning the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep learning how ministry works. Keep learning how financial systems work. Keep learning how leadership works. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me stand upon the grace that is in this house and just speak over someone that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak Exodus 14, 14 and 15 over someone. He said, Moses, how come verse 15? Why do you cry unto me? The nation of Israel, they were standing in front of the Red Sea, the Egyptians behind them. He said, speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. I declare over someone who has been stagnated in whatever area. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, go forward. Shout a believing amen. Go forward. Spiritually, go forward. Financially, go forward. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in your health go forward family go forward the Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous I decree and declare calamity will be too late to arrive your life calamity will be too late to arrive your life in the name of Jesus Christ Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 let me call forth your destiny help us Numbers 1 verse 5 every time God gives you a mandate there are men anointed to stand with you wherever they are around Lagos business partners financial helpers prayer partners I declare may they gravitate towards your life may they gravitate towards your life Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty I declare over you emptiness dies forever emptiness dies forever emptiness dies forever emptiness dies forever in the mighty name of Jesus it says by you I can run through a troop by my God I can leap over walls let me speak over your September and your October and your November and your December experience speed experience speed in four months achieve what 10 years could not give you in four months achieve what 10 years could not give you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that every grace that God has invested upon his servant may that grace be replicated in your life if it's wisdom may it be replicated if it's influence may it be replicated the Bible says for your shame you shall receive double I pray for someone who has cried through the night let this be your season of laughter may this be your season of laughter in the name of the Lord Jesus may this be your season of laughter may the hand of God rest upon you go from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus the Bible says listen when Isaac came and Jacob manipulated the process and came as Esau Isaac asked him a question he said how come you have brought this speedily he said because the Lord has brought it unto me I pray for you in the name of Jesus what others are looking for may God who is the helper Ebenezer may he bring it to you may he bring favor to you may he open doors for you and I decree and declare every door that has refused to open I declare by the voice of prophecy may it part heater and teeter may it part heater and teeter in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and give Jesus praise honor him and appreciate him Come on, 